In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys my official thoughts on this upcoming hurricane season of 2022. Let's get straight into things. And first things first, we're taking a look at our sea surface temperature anomalies. Now, this video is going to be set up like a slideshow just because it would be so hard to reshape the frame to each of these photos. Uh, so I won't be able to draw on the screen, but I'm going to try to best describe where I'm talking about for you guys. Uh, obviously, we're taking a look at the global sea surface temperature anomalies here. So this is the temperatures compared to normal around the globe. As we can see, if we look offshore of the western United States and western Canada, we have some colder water there that's considered a negative PDO. That's what that's called. Uh, and this has pretty minimal impacts on the hurricane season, actually. As we move further south from there, we can see our ENSO region. That's where we have our La Nina or El Nino. You've probably heard of those terms. Uh, and right now, we're still in a La Nina. We're going to really touch on that a little bit later on, so stay tuned uh, for later on in the video because we're going to show you some charts that are going to make it easier to understand. Now, as we look at the Atlantic, we can see things are warmer in some spots and colder in some spots, but we're going to zoom into the Atlantic in just a moment. Let's take a look at the seven-day change around the globe first off, though. And as you can see, it's all over the place. There's some areas that are warming, cooling. Uh, it's really sporadic, and it's really hard to pinpoint anything here because uh, it's very neutral if you take a look at a bigger picture region. Uh, it's, you know, equal cooling with equal warming. Um, but for little tiny regions, there is some very small areas of uh, significant cooling and significant warming. Uh, but overall, it's just very, very hard to differentiate at this point. Let's zoom into the Atlantic real quick. And here is the just sea surface temperature anomalies here. Uh, we can tell that there is some cooler waters off of Africa there as you almost take it to the Caribbean. This is kind of like our tropical Atlantic there or what we call our main development region or MDR for short because this is where hurricanes typically start. They start offshore of Africa. They mainly develop in this region, hence why it's called main development region. And then they move up into the Caribbean or out to sea in the northern Atlantic or towards the east coast or towards the Gulf. Um, but they start out in these African regions typically. Obviously, we know there is some that start in the Gulf, some that start in the Caribbean, but oftentimes, I would say probably 65 or 70 percent of these storms start offshore of Africa as tropical waves. Um, so it is significant when we see cooler waters here to note that that could, you know, really, I would say, hinder development of tropical activity if that stays cool. It's hard to predict if this is going to stay this way. Uh, or if things are going to expand on what direction they've been heading or if they're going to completely flip because last year when I made this outlook, I really took into consideration the current conditions and a lot of things changed, obviously. So it's hard for us to pinpoint what will stay the same and what will change, uh, but definitely anything in this video should be taken with a grain of salt. It is a long-range outlook, and this is my first initial look at the hurricane season, and there will be more uh, that are more updated and obviously more accurate as we draw closer to the hurricane season. So you're going to want to keep up with this series, but this is our very earliest thoughts. For the Caribbean, it's clear that there's much more yellows and oranges than blues. And actually, matter of fact, there's basically no blues. So it is much above normal for a lot of the Caribbean. The Gulf, you can see, is also far above normal, especially around Florida. And then the areas offshore of the East Coast, even taking it towards Bermuda and even uh, to the east of Bermuda, there is very warm waters around. So let's just pretend for a minute we're in August right now and the hurricane season is really starting to get going. If this was the look, uh, the storms that were starting out as waves in Africa would have a hard time at first to get going. But once they moved into the Caribbean or let's say the middle of the Atlantic, you know, towards Bermuda or the east coast or the Gulf, they would have an easy time developing once they reach that point because of these much warmer waters. Uh, so that's why that's important to note. But again, these areas can cool and the areas off of Africa could warm before the hurricane season starts. But we will see some similarities from now all the way till August. There will be some things that stick, you know, to being primarily the same, really. Uh, and again, same story here. Once we look at the seven day change, really everything is very sporadic. There has been a lot of cooling actually offshore of the East Coast and a lot of warming in the Gulf. Those are two things that I can pinpoint there that I, I can really tell are happening. Uh, but this could totally go back in the opposite direction. So take that with a grain of salt as well. Now here's where we're going to talk a little bit more about our La Nina slash El Nino. Here's the Nino 3.4 index. And this is actually the exact index that they use to measure whether we're in a La Nina or an El Nino. Uh, if you look at the left-hand side of your screen, you can see the numbers on screen. Uh, the negative 0 0.5 line, anything below that is considered a La Nina. Anything above that, all the way up to... 
positive 0.5 would be considered a neutral ENSO. So between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5 is neutral. Anything in between there. And then if you're above positive 0.5, that is considered an El Nino. Um, typically, for just, just to let you guys know, La Ninas are considered the most favorable phase for hurricane development. Um, so typically in La Ninas, we see less trade winds, less shear. That's upper level winds. And those winds tend to eat up these storms. These are very tall storms, tropical storms. And when you have very strong winds at the top and not so strong at the lower levels, that tends to just want to take the top off of these storms, which very much so hinders the development. In La Nina, we have typically less of those upper level winds, uh, those very strong upper level winds. And this can help development. That's why typically La Ninas tend to be bigger hurricane seasons and El Ninos tend to be uh, much less active hurricane seasons. Um, so just for context there. Now here is our IRI CPC model prediction of the ENSO. So this is the same type of chart as you can see. We have the negative 0.5, we have the positive 0.5, we have the neutral line there, which is indicated by the zero at the left-hand side of your screen. Again, anything above 0.5 will be an El Nino. Anything below negative 0.5 will be a La Nina. As you can see, the forecast at the bottom, look at the bottom, the letters down there. FMA, that stands for February, March, April. So they're in three-month increments. The next one is March, April, May. Next one is April, May, June. Next one is May, June, July. JJA is June, July, August. So you get the point. Um, you can look at the bottom to tell what time frame we're taking a look at here. Overall, these models are taking us in, in a positive direction. They're taking us more towards the neutral, uh, especially as we head towards August, September, October, which is ASO, if you can find that on the bottom. It's almost towards the right-hand side of the screen. It's in between the middle and the right-hand side of your screen. That is the heart of hurricane season, August through October. Um, and it looks like we're going to be in a neutral ENSO by then, uh, either almost right on the zero line or more on the La Nina side of things in a neutral ENSO. This will be a very positive, this will, this will be a very favorable phase for hurricane development. I will say that. Um, not quite as much as a further La Nina would be, which is good news that we're not dealing with that, but this will also be quite favorable oftentimes for hurricane development. Um, and, and things are generally trending more uh, towards the neutral line than they are right now. Um, and this is a different type of chart. On your left-hand side of your screen, you have probability percentage, so obviously zero through 100%. But again, at the bottom, we have the three-month increment uh, acronyms there. Um, and then the the bars there are indicating the percent chance of all three phases, La Nina, neutral, or El Nino. So right now, for March, April, May, you can see we're at an 85 or more percent chance of La Nina. Uh, and then the rest is neutral and so. So very high chance of La Nina because we are in a La Nina. Uh, and that chance dramatically falls as we approach the summer. Even as we approach August, September, October, uh, that neutral ENSO chance actually overtakes the La Nina chance, as you can see, where we have about a 50% chance of a neutral ENSO, about a four, uh, 39, 38% chance of La Nina, and then probably like a 9% chance of El Nino or whatever. I, I fill in the gaps. El Nino takes up the rest, but... We have a little bit over a 50% chance of a neutral ENSO, um, a little bit under a 40% chance of um, a La Nina, and then El Nino is the rest. Uh, so it, it's looking likely that for the hurricane season, we will be either in a weak La Nina or a neutral ENSO. Both would be fairly favorable for tropical development, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, so it's not going to matter too much which one of those phases we're in. Uh, now, as we take a look, just we're going to take a look at some other charts here. North Atlantic overall was cooling for quite a while as we approached later in March, even to where we went below neutral. So we were actually in a colder Atlantic overall, North Atlantic, but we've kind of climbed back out of that at, to this point in early April. And we're going to have to see over the coming months how this trends. Now, the Atlantic MDR, again, that's called our main development region, again, offshore of Africa, was very positive. But towards the end of March there and into early April, we saw this drop off considerably. And now we're sitting just below neutral. Now, for the Caribbean, we're actually in a very po uh, warm Caribbean here. We saw that on the actual temperature anomaly map. Uh, and sure enough, here on the chart, it's also showing that the Caribbean is going to be quite warm compared to normal as of now. Gulf of Mexico, it's the same exact story, very, very warm compared to normal. Uh, so all of these things are definitely worth noting. 
I hope this video helped you understand a little bit of what my thoughts are for the hurricane season. I'm expecting overall a slightly above average hurricane season as of right now. I feel like it's a very conservative outlook because there is a few things that definitely point towards a very active hurricane season. There's a few things that point towards a more... Um, a more normal hurricane season. I would say some of the temperature anomalies like in the main development region would, would hold my thoughts back a little bit on going too crazy with how active it's going to be. But if we see those things climb more towards favorable territory for tropical development as we approach the hurricane season, I'll feel a lot more confident in a much more above average hurricane season, if that makes sense. So there is some things we need to wait on. So I highly recommend you subscribe and stay up to date with these outlooks as I make them. I'll probably try to make one about once a month up until about August and maybe even into the hurricane season. We'll continue to update you guys. So be sure to stay up to date with those as we're going to be just dropping more information on it over the coming months. For today's confidence tab, for obvious reasons because of the long range nature of this video we're at a three out of six overall uh, which is about moderate to low confidence moderate low is, is what i would say uh for today's patron highlight of the day i want to thank you all for supporting the channel but especially our platinum patrons bill Crates, james wade dovin nagel lord the pan mandy birchfield patrick strickland dave scott and donna carnes as well i would also to thank our diamond patrons bill roberts marcus connelly noah holly mccoy lessa cap bite charles Dennett, bill dallas gary's and john felici also i would also to thank our channel members cap bite stephen fan and jeremy cox as well Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.